Hello YouTube, my name is Marie and today we're going to talk about the first six episodes of My Strange Hero, a currently airing K-drama. Now I didn't make a, a true script today so hopefully I'm not like all over the place. I kind of just like wrote down like quick thoughts of what I had about the show. Let's see how this goes. So at the moment, I believe there's actually eight episodes out of this show, but I already enjoy it so much that I know I'm going to want to put a pause on watching it, wait till it's finished, and then binge it. Now first things first, My Strange Hero is about a... <sighs> see, this is what happens when I don't make a script. But your female lead is an aspiring teacher. At the moment, she is part-time and she really wants to get that full-time position. And our male lead knows our female lead from high school and there is a mystery surrounding them. A little bit of drama happened. He was wronged, but you don't know how. And it's them reconnecting later in life. I Maybe they're about 25. I'm not exactly sure but he ends up going back to school where she's teaching. And that is my first thing. I wanna get my negatives out of the way because I only have two. And the first one is that I think the plot is ridiculous. I, I don't understand it. And that's probably a cultural difference. Like I don't know how it works in South Korea, but in Canada, a grown ass man would never go back to high school with high schoolers like if he wanted to go back and get his high school education there are adult programs for that specific reason so the fact that our male lead actually puts on the uniform again and goes back to school with teenagers to me i was just like no that wouldn't happen <laughs> but again i mean that could be the case in south korea but i just i doubt it like i don't I don't see how that would work having adults mixed in with teenagers and just like I just don't think that that's realistic at all and then the second negative is there is a little bit of shaky cam and I think shaky cam is the bane of my existence <laughs> when it comes to TV and entertainment because I don't see a reason for it unless you're like on a boat or on a plane and like there's a reason that the camera is doing that like for the setting and stuff there's no reason for shaky cam i hate it every time i see it on screen it's super distracting and i would just oh. <laughs> now my next point i feel some people are not going to like this show because of how stylized it is well for me i love how stylized it is so i think that this show is going to be very polarizing and that is because this show is so extra the music's really up here and then the acting's up here and like the filmmaking is up here like everything is so heightened it's almost cartoonish but because everything is on that level somehow it all works together and it's just super fun to me i i really like it it's now for the storytelling aspects i think the show balances the present and the past storylines perfectly. I think you're probably split with your screen times half and half and they bounce off of each other really well. So you might have questions during the present time and then you go back and then you see it unfold in the past and then it get, like it ping pongs back and forth. The writers know how to pique your interest. The questions keep you engaged because you'll have one it's answered and then you're given another one they don't just pile up on each other you're oh let's talk about the uh music shall we and like i said earlier every aspect of this show is operating at like 110 percent the music is so over the top and just so dramatic and so epic and sometimes i kind of laugh at it because it's taking itself so seriously but in a fun way one specific moment is when our male lead comes back to school for the first time and there's kind of a press conference happening and the music during that scene is hilarious to me because it's so dramatic <laughs> but again it works for the stylized atmosphere of the show everything works very well together but 
again, I think it's going to be polarizing because some people are going to be like, wow, that's a lot. That's way too extra for me. Like, it's a bit ridiculous where I am like, where's my popcorn? Let's have fun. Now, our male lead, I'll put his name on the screen. I am really terrible at remembering people's names in my everyday life so don't expect me to remember actors and actresses names it's just it's just not gonna happen but I know him and I really love him I think he's incredibly charismatic and his acting pulls it off like you can tell that he's just having so much fun with this role and his enjoyment like seeps off of the screen and it affects me like he's having so much fun so I'm having fun you know I burst out laughing several times within this show and that's really important for me to mention because most of the time I don't enjoy foreign comedies I think this show and then the best hit are what I think is good solid Korean comedy or at least the comedy that I enjoy so if you liked the best hit this kind comedy is very similar and it it's all reaction based like it it's not um skits or anything like that but it's his like the male leads reactions to situations that i think is hilarious and then like how other characters react to the situations like the acting is so good and it's so much fun if you can't tell i'm really liking this show this show has reminded me why I liked K-dramas to begin with. Isn't that nice? <laughs> so there we go, that is my first impression. I'm, I hope you got something from it because usually I do scripts and today I didn't, so you get what you get. Anyways, I hope you have a wonderful holidays. Have a good day, have a good night, bye.